What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So, today's video, as promised, we are making a project from one of these stained glass books that I found on Amazon. So, if you haven't seen my previous couple videos, I had mentioned that I picked up these books from Amazon and linked them in my description. So if you guys wanted to pick them up too, you could make this project alongside with me. So if you haven't done that yet and wanna watch this video at a later date and do that, I will link those books down below so you guys can still grab them. So my original plan was to make a couple pieces out of each, ones of, each one of these books, but I realized there's no way for me to actually truly show you guys every step of the process unless I'm dedicating one video per project. So we're going to make this a series and later on in the video, I'm going to show you all of the options I think would be good to show you guys and to make together. So you'll have to comment down below. Let me know what projects do you guys want to see next and that will be my next video in this series. But for today, we are making this very simple, very easy, cool, geometric looking stained glass candlestick. So this one is specifically from Stained Glass Projects for Beginners. And again, I wanted to pick something that was easy and feasible for those of you that actually are just starting stained glass to do at home. I didn't want to pick something that had bevels in it or mirrors, because then you would need mirror sealant. I didn't want to pick a box because then you would need box closures and hooks and all that stuff. So I wanted to pick something really simple, a design that we could tweak if we needed to. So all you need are your basic stained glass materials. So nothing extra, just your stained glass, solder, everything you normally need to cut it and all of that. So that's what we're making in today's video. That sounds like something we're into. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video by the end. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you wanna see next time. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, so even though I'm pretty sure I already decided, I still wanna show you the projects that I was choosing between. So you guys can let me know down below what you wanna see next time. So I'm pretty sure this is what I want to tackle today. It's this very simple candle stand. And the only thing that we are going to change up on it is the vase cap itself. So in this design, they use something called a vase cap, which is just this little tiny metal circle, which holds the candle itself. And one, I don't like that because I'm sure you guys don't have one of those kicking around your house. But two, it has holes all over it. Why does it have those holes all over it? candle wax is just going to drop right through that so we're going to change that we're just going to make it ourselves out of a little circle of glass and some copper foil so i think that's what we're going to do today there's only one other project that i like out of this book specifically and again this is the stained glass projects for beginners book candle stand is on page 42 the other project i was thinking is this three-dimensional star so yes this is made out of mirror and of course you guys can let me know down below do you want me to do it out of mirror mirror anyway but we can switch that up and do it with any glass we want we can really alter any of these stencils and designs to however we need to so i thought this three-dimensional star might also be really really fun again very simple cuts i think this is feasible for any artist no matter where you are all the other designs in the book are unfortunately dated <laughs> So I do like this book. I think it's helpful. I do agree that it is for beginners, except for the things like this. This is not really for beginners, I would say. And it's just very dated. I'm not super thrilled with all the other designs. It's just very grandma's bathroom feeling, if you know what I mean. But I did find these two. I think this one we're gonna tackle today. I do really like this and I've got high hopes for it. So the other book. I wish we would have time, but just like these other YouTubers or other videos I've seen online, people just gloss over stained glass. Like it's this super easy art form when it's not. And then you miss half of the steps that it actually does because they're rushing through a video. So we're just gonna stick to one project per video and we'll make this a series. So out of this second book, this was my first pick. I think this would be really fun. I do already have these sun catcher crystal balls in here. And although they use these little pre-cut bevels, I think we can just make that ourselves out of any type of stained glass. And it would be really, really pretty. I think if we used a clear iridescent stained glass, that would be fun. 
So that's number one. My second pick was this candle holder trio. So this is kind of like the other one that we are gonna actually do today, but this is obviously a three set. And again, they use bevels. I feel like bevels look so dated. I don't really like it. So we can use any type of stained glass we want if you guys do want to see that. My next pick was this angelic bevel sconce. So again, we're not going to use bevels. We would just use normal clear glass, or if you want to use bevels, go for it. You can use anything you want. But the thing I do want to change the most is instead of putting an angel in the front here, I want to do a moon phase. So I'm going to do a little small moon in the center and a moon phase going up and down. You could do really any shape you want for this. I think the versatility of designs like this, especially if we're doing this together, makes it really, really fun. So we all make the sconce itself the same, but then when it comes to putting the actual design or angel on the front, we can put whatever we want there. We could do a cat silhouette, a moon phase, we do literally anything, any type of plant, a flower, a rose would be really pretty. So I don't know, let me know down below you guys, what do you wanna see next? And hopefully you guys even enjoy this series. So this was the last option, this nightlight beacon. Now, I think this is super easy and quick. And again, this is a very versatile one because it has that flower on the front. We can change that with anything we want. A rose would be even more beautiful because it's just this I don't know, very basic, weird looking flower. I'm not all about it, but again, you guys can do anything you want and we can make it together. So if you guys like this series, let me know. Let me know what you wanna see next. And if you wanna do something like a nightlight, I will put the links in the description and I will show you where to get the nightlight clips and the actual nightlight module so we can make something like this together. But like I said, for today, we are working out of the Stained Glass Projects for Beginners book. And again, starting on page 42, we are working with the candle stand. Okay, so before we get going, you don't have the option to just pull the actual stencil out. This does need to be photocopied, but this candle stand needs to be photocopied at 200%. So I'm going to cut this out and bring it over to my photocopier and blow that up a bit. And the materials say felt tip pen, glass cutter, cutting square, running pliers, grozer, breaker pliers, not using those. And it says silicone carbide stone. So again, they are not assuming that you have a glass grinder since you're a beginner stained glass artist. So they're gonna have you use a carbide stone to rough up those edges, which is great. So we're actually gonna do that. It says you're gonna need 732 black backed copper foil, a FID, so a burnisher. You're gonna need a flux brush, flux, soldering iron, solder, vase cap. So that's what this is up here, that vase cap, but we're gonna make our own out of stained glass. Rubber gloves and black patina. So. Before we get into any of that, get you guys' stencil ready. First thing we're going to do is start cutting out our pieces of glass. So let's put all this to the side here and let's read number one. So it says, enlarge the patterns on the page 166, which is this, to the correct size and draw over the outlines in felt tipped pen. You will need one large and two small pieces. So you need one large and too small. Lay the glass over the pattern, making sure the lines beneath are clearly visible. Position the cutter correctly, align the cutting square, and hold it firmly with one hand while pressing the glass cutter down along the cutting square starting at the top. Score each of the straight lines first, breaking the glass after each score, and finally score and break out the curve at the top of the three pieces freehand. So, I don't like doing that. I like making all of my scores first. And this is about showing you guys how I make stained glass. So I'm gonna do it the way I make stained glass. So all I'm gonna do is take my ruler, take my Sharpie. I use a thick Sharpie. Doesn't really matter too much here because this design is so simple. I'm just going to match up my ruler here and I'm going a little bit inside of that line because this Sharpie is thick. So once I draw that thickness of the Sharpie, is going to make it line up with that line perfectly, right? So now I'm just going to trace out the rest of these stencils. Again, now I'm going outside of the Sharpie because my Sharpie is going to be to the right a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so because we are going to make our own vase cap out of a flat piece of glass, we're going to have to adjust our stencil. So I'm gonna take that off. And instead of drawing in these curved lines, we need to straighten those out. So all we gotta do is just straighten out this line at the top. Now for this part, I'm gonna use the thinner Sharpie because we're getting a little bit more detailed. We need to make sure that this is perfectly even. Now, because these designs are right next to each other, we should be able to hypothetically just do it like that. And same thing on this side to make sure that they're direct or they're perfectly even. So I'm just gonna draw straight all the way across here and just connect that little bit of extra space at the bottom. So now, instead of using that curved edge, we're going to follow our new line, giving us a flat top. This one we're getting rid of. So now we can put our stencil back on top. We should have done that in the first place, but it doesn't really matter too much. Now we've got to do our top and bottom here, which is nice and easy because we've already adjusted our stencil. All right, I'm going to draw all the way across this piece of glass because we need two of these and I'm gonna to have to copy that over on the other side. And I'm just gonna draw it all the way across that piece of glass. So I'm gonna move this over here, line up that top and bottom edge and draw the outside lines. Alrighty, so now we've got every piece traced out. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Now we're gonna cut it. So I'm gonna get my stencil out of the way here. Now on the directions it says, hold it firmly with one hand, pressing the glass cutter down along the cutting square starting at the top. Score each of the straight lines first, breaking the glass after each score. Finally score and break out the curve at the top of each of the three pieces freehand. So, like I said, I don't particularly follow that rule. A lot of the time I will score all of the glass at once and then go in and break it. And I've found that that works just fine for me, but everybody makes stuff differently. So if you guys need to score the straight lines, break them all, then cut the curves, break them all, then absolutely do that. I mean, we're not working with the curves here anymore anyway, since we flattened off those tops, but normally, curves or not, I'm scoring everything, then breaking everything. That's just how I do it. Okay, so I'm just going to freehand this because I'm comfortable doing that. If you're not, use your straight edge or your ruler to help. I've already got my glass cutter covered in glass cutting oil, and we're going to simply cut out our designs. I think the first thing we can do is chop these. Chop those, outside edges. Here's our first piece. Here's our middle piece. And our last piece, cool. And I'm going to save all of these as glass scraps. If we had a big enough piece, I would use that as that circular piece we're gonna put at the top, but it's not gonna be big enough, so I'm gonna put these to the side in some glass scraps and we will move on. Alrighty guys, now, like I said earlier, we're not going to be using this actual metal vase cap that they have right here. We're just gonna make one. That's why we flattened our design. So. All I did was just print it out a perfect circle. Now we're just going to trace that and cut that out on a scrap piece of glass. So I'm using a scrap piece of glass because we're going to cover the entire thing in foil and we're going to solder it. So it's a solid piece of metal by the time we're done. All right, so we've got all of our pieces cut. I'm gonna get everything out of the way and I'm going to grab my silicone carbide stone so we can start grinding off all of these edges. All right, so I've got a cup of water here and of course I've still got my safety glasses on because glass is gonna be flying. And I'm gonna dip this. We're gonna take our stone and we're just gonna grind these edges down.
Alrighty, so we've got all of our edges hit with the stone. Now you need to rinse these off. So you do not want to put glass mud directly down your sink ever. That will eventually clog your sink and make an absolute disaster. So for my grinder, I have this. So what this glass bucket is, is to take all of my glass when I'm done grinding and to dip my glass inside that bucket to get the majority of that glass mud off before I take it to the sink. You wanna make sure that these are looking almost completely clean before you bring these over to your sink. That will absolutely destroy your pipes. So now that I've rinsed all of these off, we've got our edges ground with that stone. I'm gonna take it over to the sink, like I said, and I'm just gonna quickly rinse these off with some warm water. If you need some soap, use some Dawn dish soap to get everything off of this glass. All right, you guys. So, I've got all my clean pieces of glass here. We've just ground those edges down with that stone. So the next step is going to be wrapping it with foil. So rub the glass pieces with silicone carbide stone to blunt them, wash dry, copper foil, all glass edges, leaving equal amounts of foil exposed on either side. Wrap and press down the foil around the edges of each piece, folding the excess down onto the sides of the glass and smoothing down with the fit. Basically, wrap it with copper foil. So, I've got my 732 black backed copper foil right here. And I've got these two pieces of copper foil which I've already cut out for my circle. And I'm gonna lay those down first because these are gonna get laid down before we do the outside edge. That way these can kind of be encased. All right, our little round is good enough to go. Now we've got to be a little bit more careful with these edges because this is what's going to be most visible. So we really want to make sure that all these edges are nice and even. And of course, if you don't want to patina your solder black, you can use silver backed copper foil and just leave it silver. So again, shooting right for the middle here, making sure that I've got the same amount of copper foil on each side, right? All right, that looks perfectly even, so I'm just going to burnish all these edges of foil and do that for the other two pieces. Cool, I think this is gonna be really neat, you guys. All right, all our pieces are foiled. I'm gonna get all of this stuff out of the way and bring in all of my soldering stuff. All righty, so I've got my soldering mat in front of me. My soldering iron is heating up. I've got some pre-cut 60-40 rods right here. Let's look at the next step in the directions. So after foiling, it says, apply flux with a brush and tin solder the copper foiled edges of each piece of glass individually. So the very first thing we've got to do is tin all of these edges. So again, tinning, if you're new to stained glass, is just putting a light coat of that solder on top of all of the foiled edges. And while we're here, we can cover this in solder as well, since this is our little makeshift, makeshift candle holder. So we can cover that in flux, but we're going to be just tinning every other edge. Alrighty, so we have all of our edges tinned. Now it says with a felt tip pen, draw a cross with perfect right angle angles on a piece of paper. Place the large central shaft of the stand on one line and one of the stand's wings per perpendicular to it on the drawn cross. So it wants us to draw this. So just a perfect 90 degree angle cross. That way we can use this as a guide when we're soldering our pieces together. So you just gotta kind of aim for the middle here and we've gotta tack one of our wings on. So we're gonna have to hold that nice and tight in place. Hold our wing. Can you guys see what's going on here? So I've got my big wing sitting what looks like the middle right on that line. 
Now I'm gonna take this side wing and put it directly on this line. And the point of doing this is just to try to get it as even as possible. So I'm gonna hold that in place, get my flux, hit the top, and we're just gonna tack that in place. So that basically just means melt a tiny little bit of solder just to get it to hold so you can let go. Melt some solder at the top of the junction to affix the wing in place and repeat that process with the other wing. So we're not going to the bottom just yet. We're gonna put the other wing on too. This is tricky to hold in place, guys. That area with flux and tack it in place. Cool. Now it says melt some solder at the top of the junction to affix it, repeat with the other wing. When both wings are tack soldered at the top, melt a tiny amount of solder to the bottom edges as shown. So right here, bottom edges, to secure the sides to the central piece. So it's saying to turn it kind of on its side and now we're going to tack the bottom of these pieces as well. So I'm gonna hold it on its side like this because this is just easier for me. Hitting it with a little bit of flux and I'm gonna drop a little bead down in that corner. Grab a little more, drop a little bead down in that corner. All right, now we gotta do it for the other side. And dropping a little bead in there. All right, so now we're pretty sturdy. So step five says turn the stand upside down and add a tiny bit of solder to the bottom center where the sides and the central piece meet. Don't leave any bumps of solder or the stand will be wobbly. The last step we're gonna have is to put our little candle holder on the top and solder that in place. All right, so step six. All right, so basically it's telling you to put that vase cap on, but since we don't have a little cradle, so hopefully again you guys can see, I just laid that cap down. I'm gonna put my candle stand directly on top of it. I'm gonna look for the center. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna hit it with some flux and start tacking those edges down in place. So, what does the next step say? Does it say anything about going back in and building those beads up? It doesn't. So it just says, apply more flux, reinforce the vase cap to the stand. Then it says to wash thoroughly with warm soapy water, rinse with clean water to remove all that flux. And then wearing rubber gloves, tip some black patina onto a sponge and apply it to the soldered copper foiled edges. Wash the stand well with soapy water. Rinse with clean water. So that's just about it for the directions. What I'm gonna do is go back in and build up the bead on these edges just so it looks a little bit nicer than what it's looking like right now. So I'm just gonna pick up small beads of solder and I'm just gonna add a little bit to these edges just to give it a little more strength. I don't like leaving just tinned edges like that. If you guys watch my soldering school videos, then you know how to properly build up a bead on the edge of your glass. All right, guys, I am pretty happy with this. It is very sturdy. Everything is locked in place. So the last thing I'm gonna do is take it over to my sink. Now, another comment I've gotten is, as nobody ever shows them washing the stained glass. So when I take it to the sink, I put on warm water, nice and warm, not too hot, not too cold. I have a very soft bristle scrub brush. I put it under the warm water and I scrub it with warm water and Dawn dish soap. Scrub the entire thing. Give it a nice good scrub, get all that flux off and dry it off. So I'm gonna go do that right now, bring it back and we will cover this in patina and we're almost done. Oh. You know what we should do actually, just to make a little bit of an edge for the wax to not melt off, we should drop some beads all the way around the outside of this first. Alrighty, so we just got back from our nice warm water soapy bath. Last step guys is covering this in patina and then we can see what the finished product looks like. Alrighty guys, that's it for today's video. I like it, I think it came out cute. That was pretty easy, if you ask me. Super straight cuts, anybody can do this, even if you've never even tried stained glass before. I think this is feasible for a first project, as long as you um, 
are confident in it. Confidence, I think, is a huge part of stained glass, and I think just about anybody can tackle this. It didn't take long at all, and it came out super cute. It's something that I would actually have in my house, for sure. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you guys wanna see for my next project out of these books, and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.